so we are going to start with the ice navigation and the first thing in that is uh, the master's obligation to report so the master of every ship uh, if he meets any dangerous ice or dangerous derelict or any dangerous sub freezing temperatures gale force then he is uh, bound to report this information to the nearby ships by broadcast and to all the competent authorities the nearby port state flag state and your company and all and there is a form for that which is not mandatory you must have done this uh, coding and all and in that it is uh, mentioned so you don't need to know everything this is all in mentioned in so last chapter 5 regulation 31 you should just know that something is there so reporting is to be done only when it is uh, you see something dangerous to navigation and it is not reported in the current storm warnings so this is a sample of a report like you do in coding like you write three tangos ttt and you write the next word ice so you got a simple report about ice its location and date and all and if you write uh, derelict and all we'll mention about that <laughs> then uh, we should know the different publications and where to get the information about the ice first is uh, mariner's handbook and p100 is the best book we have lots of photographic uh, pictureizations and full details found on all ships very handy and uh, you can everywhere nowadays pdf is also available so first reading and first hand information very simple understanding and methods are given in ice uh, mariner's handbook so the best book to refer and all you are getting very small questions regarding this but compulsory like mostly you are getting questions then pocket guide to cold waters the blue book from imo and polar code which came into force in 1st january 2017 recently and also chapter 14 of solas is included in that uh, solas now polar waters so more and more ice ships are coming into this then there are some uh, publications from coast guard canadian coast guards manis ice manual is a free version if you go to canadian coast guard website you type ice manual you can get this very nice good information and then ice navigation in canadian waters one more publication also from canadian coast guards the most uh, information here is from this and then ice navigation manual the last one the by vidarbi which is publishing all the passage planning guides and uh, all other guides so this is a paid version books but a very nice books if you have on your ship so these are the publications you have to refer for ice navigation notes and all then now before you enter any other things what are the factors you have to take into account for ice navigation so some part of ice question is in all the question papers and uh, these are the things or points which you have to write so mainly human health and tolerance or of course human health like frostbite and all is which is uh, of course affecting in ice navigation and your experience and knowledge in your ice waters is also very important then equipment performance this is the most question asked or what like, like regarding precautions or high latitude ice navigation so how your equipments are affected and then uh, ice hazards and constraints so a small brief of what are the hazards and the constraints while moving in ice the different classes of ice vessels and then uh, ice charts international ice patrol 
and the types and categories of it and uh, ice though it's a very used topic but on phase 2 level it's uh, not asked in too much details so navigation principle and shift safety is more concerned in asm masters but some part of shift safety we will see in this uh, phase 2 level so let's start with human health and tolerance so first we know frostbite in very low temperatures uh, your uh, fluids and blood tissues start getting frozen and uh, when the skin temperature falls uh, between minus 10 to minus 16 it's called frostbite the in worst case uh, if it will chop your hands and all fingers like if your fingers and all they are totally frozen it will break like ice especially it's like it has happened on ships that people just are in outside deck and fingers are frozen and they put immediately under very running hot water and it gets broken like ice gets broke so nose cheek chin ears and feet are common parts which get affected by frostbite all their exposed parts now what is the solution for frostbite we should know so uh, first is you get some numbness while your tissues are getting frozen and later on you get uh, unbearable pain so you should realize you should have uh, very short exposures to these colds and keep taking uh, hot waters slowly get the temperature back to normal so go to accommodation take some hot drinks and hot food or water you should never suddenly pour hot water or rubbing or massage in this snow with snow. So normally if somebody is collapsing, we are massaging, but in this temperature should not massage because massaging brings the heat to the extremities parts where you're giving. But in this case, already the body temperature is down. So if you do massaging and heat is coming to the extremities, then your heart and all can get very low heat and you can get heart attacks or some things never take alcohol or something for uh, treating cold uh, problems like frostbite you know. so you might also breathing problems could take place uh, you might not be able to breathe properly you can you will open your mouth and breathe all your muscles uh, even if you can have difficulty in speaking so panting and intake of large mass of cold air will cause internal frostbite also if it is very cold weather and cold air so proper breathing yoga breathing procedures uh, will help you a lot and uh, some ayurvedic spices and proper hot food very important then uh, frequent rest periods is very important to keep your body warm and should not force any cadet or crew to be in the deck or working for long times even in emergency you have to take break because people will get affected with this uh, frostbite and all and then it will be very difficult to work for them So Foxel and all other accommodation places, we have heaters or you have this uh, AC running in steam mode. So these are the solutions for uh, in ice places. And you should have proper warm clothing, fully covered. Nowadays, we have some special clothing, special boiler suits for ice areas. Then if you have a chilling wind, so feeling of coldness uh, increases uh, with the increase speed. so the if the winds are very high speed and then chilly so it has much more effect so clothing is the best solution for uh, winds you have wind shields also and also multi-layer warm clothings and also for ships you have this ice and snow or sometimes spray coming so you should have a 
like a plastic layered of cloth. So this is the table for equivalent chilling temperature chart. So you can see the temperatures which are dangerous and which are not dangerous. So, so it's showing the speed of wind and at which temperature it starts becoming dangerous and uh, the dangers are increasing. So as for company, they will show that whenever it is dangerous, uh, the crew has to take more and more breaks. It's written like great danger, the flesh will freeze within 30 minutes. So they can work only for 10, 15 minutes on the deck. So your companies can uh, implement these tables. Then there's something called snow blindness. You can get snow blindness because the reflection of the sun is very high glared in these places like you see in movies so uv rays reflected from the snow and ice they affect the cornea of the eye and hence they need to protect it from the by goggles if you have a overcast sky also this snow blindness can occur because your uv rays are present it can affect your eyes, so your eyes should be covered. Then next problem we know about eyes area is hypothermia. So core temperature of the body goes down less than 35 degrees centigrades. Normally is between 36.5 to 37.5 and fever is more than 37.5 or 38.3. But if you have less than 35, then it's hypothermia. So core temperature 37 degrees centigrade of body going abnormally low. So if the water temperature chart is there with the survival time, so if the water temperature is five to 10 degrees, you have maximum 30 to 60 minutes. And uh, it depends on different person body. You can survive between one to three hours. And unconsciousness will occur within 30 to 60 minutes so when you are shivering it is a it's a, like a body temperature body remedy that your uh, coughing or shivering is a anti remedy for uh, taking out like shivering the body is itself trying to get the body temperature normal by vibration of the cells and all so So these are the main issues of uh, eyes. <laughs> then knowledge and experience, we will see quickly. So how people who have already sailed can help you. The signs of sea ice in vicinity. So if people, you can ask the ships who have gone by or they are moving ahead that if they find any problems, or by looking at the wave period, uh, current charts. So there's called ice bling. You can have on clear days. This gives a glare on the horizon, yellowish haze on the horizon. Then in overcast sky, it appears as whitish glare. Or you can have a thick band of fog of drift ice. So these are the symbols of uh, approaching ice or ice nearby. Small fragrance of ice, if you know the fragrance of ice. Then sudden smoothening of seas. Because of presence of ice, the waves cannot travel. So this is ice blink. You can see the shiny or glare of ice in that area you can have ice so, so you should not go in that area if you can avoid like this is also one more example of ice blink then we should know the signs of iceberg so in absence of sea in fresh breeze indicates the presence of ice icebergs in the windward area. 
So if you don't have fresh breeze, well, you might have icebergs because which is blocking your uh, wind. Then thunderous roars, growlers. So now we will see how to know we have open waters or it's just a horizon. So there's something called water sky. It is exactly opposite of ice blink. It is a dark color spot like this, you can see. So in the center, we have bright luminous top and we have dark areas on the sides. So in the middle is the ice blink and on the sides is your water sky. It's red color, you can see the ice blink. Now here, when we see the horizon, on the right picture, that dark side, that is your dark streaks or water sky, uh, indicating the open waters. So increasing in swell can indicate open waters, of course, like generally dark fog spots. Then the phenomena for uh, ice waters abnormal refractions and optical illusions like you see in the pictures, superior mirage, Pata Morgana. So these objects can look uh, elongated or they look like floating in the sky as you see in the second picture. So these are the abnormal refractions or optical illusions. So these uh, navigation problems you can write down in your exams and white out it occurs when the sky and snow assume a uniform whiteness, making the horizon indistinguishable and eliminating the contrast. So if you're standing straight or not, your ship is upright or not, you cannot see. So perception is based on the horizon and horizon you cannot see in the whiteout. Everywhere you see white out, the sky is white and the sea is white. So you cannot distinguish like you see in the last picture, third picture. So you're, you are lost by visually where you are. Then there are some ice hazards and constraints. Uh, either you are in fresh water or sea water, ice accumulation is taking on ships. That's the most biggest danger which reduces your GM. And that's why you have this uh, winter load line below summer line where you can load less. Then ice accumulation occurs because of fog or ice, Arctic sea smoke, freezing drizzle or sea sprays in seawater. Then if you are uh, in fresh water, then you have from fog, rain, drizzle or rime liable to fall on the crew working on deck. So if it is falling on the crew, you should know that it is from fresh water or snowing. But it can be life threatening also sometimes if it is our big chunks. So your radar scanners can get damaged or failed areas. Antennas can get uh, damaged. You should have insulators everywhere. Uh, and uh, they can get stuck, like you can get have the creaking sound. Ice or fog horn player will render it user. So your fog horn can get damaged. Like normally, if you have water on it, they don't uh, work properly. So if they have ice, obviously they can't work properly. Then melting and then freezing, freezing rain cloud make it impossible for access to the deck equipment. So manholes, hatch covers, all are covered with ice, wind glass, mooring winches. So like, you know, like mooring ropes are many places covered fully with snow and you have to cut sometimes for hand birthing. So deck equipment, machineries are worst affected. Then for a crew, it's very slippery on deck and it uh, is very hazardous. Even if you're wearing your gum boots and everything, it's very slippery. Then the amount of seawater ice accumulated on deck is much more, especially in rough weather, because like spray, they will be coming more and get freezing because of the sub-zero temperatures. 
So with shipping seas, freezing temperatures, considerable amount of ice can accumulate on ship side, deck, forecastle, deck equipments. And so something which you cannot avoid no matter how much uh, de-icing salt or what you put. And rapidity, how fast they are freezing will depend on the temperatures, of course, the density, winds, how fast is wind speed, subsequent uh, rain or no, relative course in relation to the wind, waves and design of the vessels. Then your design, like if you have a narrow bow or a big bow, if you have a lot of draft, so if your ship is more underwater, then you will be more affected by the water temperature. And mm. if your kg is more, then also. And in extreme cases, your vessel can capsize. If you have a lot of ice accretion on deck. So these are the areas showing of heavy icing in North Atlantic and North Pacific. So above the lines, you can see like Greenland and all this above these dotted lines, these are the areas for very high accumulation of ice. So sometimes you have a research vessels or some pilot cutter vessels. See the full ship is covered with ice, winches, everything, bow windlass, everything is completely frozen. So it's very difficult to work on the ship. You can imagine these types of ships and you write about the exams like pilot vessel, you can see also fully present Great Lakers. So Great Lakes in Canada, shipping seas, you can see the worst ice accumulation is uh, occurring with the uh, shipping seas. So this is from the ships uh, where you have narrow long ships going in the lakes for cutting through the ice, ice class vessels. Great Lakes, like you know, is always very min going up to minus 35 degrees centigrade. Then navigation principles, uh, we have to avoid ice accumulation. The golden is first thing is you have to avoid ice area. But we cannot avoid always. Then you can reduce the speed by which you can reduce the spray and try to avoid wind from uh, bow. Then we have to avoid all most precautions in gale force winds with the air temperature about minus two degrees centigrade or below. Then very important to take care of the deck lines because of freezing, they get broken and like that. So draining, if they have fresh water or seawater in the line, especially seawater, uh, seawater pipelines, freshwater pipelines, like your fire lines and all and walls they will get damaged if there is any water inside because it will get frozen and unfrozen and in that because of expansion and contraction the pipelines and walls will get broken then cargo and tank cleaning lines steam lines deck service and ig line always you have drain cock moisture to be drained ballast tanks should not be pressed up there should be some space left for expansion then for tankers, so deck equipment, PV breaker, fresh water to be mixed with antifreeze like glycol and all. As per the manufacturing instructions, PV walls to be serviced and covered from uh, freezing, like put some cover or grease. Then hydraulic walls cover important uh, manifold walls and operation boxes, emergency shutdowns. main problem is hatch covers on bulk are very difficult to open you cannot uh, very difficult to do in bulk areas to clean the tracks and all then ballast cover vents to be loosely covered if uh, you don't cover then seaworthiness of the vessel will be affected if uh, they get frozen and choked and if uh, you make them tight then uh, the purpose is lost and then also your vessel is not seaworthy in case they create vacuum or your tank can get ruptured and all 
it's very dangerous. Then cover the exposed mooring ropes and winches. As we saw, mooring rope winches gets frozen. Windlass hydraulic system should have to keep running continuously. You have to check the header tank. Then deck seal has to be kept with seawater circulation. And you can start steam heating also. Continuous circulation has to be there. Adequate de-icing salt for a deck everywhere. Which like it can just delay the formation of ice and you can keep removing it. Like you see in for in some videos, every day morning they remove ice from their nearby homes. Otherwise, it gets uh, getting layered up. Then cow machine has to be in circulation, otherwise it will not work. Then bridge equipment, bridge window, you know, you have to wash, uh, wash water has line has to be drained, same fresh water line and heater has to be there used. The RAS scanning should be running continuously. So there is an option of keeping the radar uh, running in the standby mode also. So that's option you have to use in ice waters. So every time it's a scanner has to be run. If it is otherwise, if it you stop and it gets frozen, then it's gone. Fog horns should be kept ice free. As we told, every time they have to be keep clean, they have heaters, it should be on. Then machinery space. You have to use a low suction for main engine cooling water. So seaches should be unfreezed. You can put just yes, use low steam for the sea chest or you can use compressed air to clean the sea chest blockage. Main engine should be running astern. It should not be running. Otherwise, your rudder and propeller can be affected with the ice. So you have to be careful and afraid of all forms of ice. Don't uh, misunderstand the power of ice. Maintain the freedom of maneuver. Keep moving very slowly always, even if you see ice all over and try to work with ice movement and weakness, but not against them. Excessive speed is always causing damage with ice because of the weight of the ice and know your ship's maneuvering characteristics properly that we will see in ASM masters. Then uh, if you have a longer but more safer and way without ice, of course, we should choose that. Then once a ship becomes trapped, the vessel is uh, under the mercy of ice only and it will go wherever the ice will take, to, take you. So the ice navigation requires great patience and can be a tiring business with or without icebreaker escort. So if you're stuck, it is very a big problem for you and it will depend on uh, type of ice which time of the year to get uh, any assistance because you are in a place where for long distances there is no habitations then uh, ice breakers are available or not your vessel is ice class or not status of all machinery equipment quantity of bunkers you have so if you are stuck for long time you have seen that you no know, Passenger ships stuck in fully ice area, they don't have bunkers and uh, food for long durations. They have to be rescued. Draft and depth of water, experience of masters, availability of ice charts, extra lookouts are very, very important. The nighttime, anyways, you cannot make out anything. Search lights and the cooling system. 